Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the tree filter in Photoshop. I do have a bit of a sore throat, so bear with me. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the tree filter in Photoshop. It's one of these filters that's been around for almost 10 years, but hardly gets talked about. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use it and how you can incorporate it into your compositing workflow. If you want to follow along, I have included the images that I use in a link in the description of this video. Go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop. I'm going to go to File, Open. I'm going to open this Martino file. Uh, this is a file from Unsplash, and we're just going to use this as a reference and a starting point. Now, to access the tree filter, you're going to go up to Filter, Render, and Tree. Now, if you do it on an existing layer like this, it'll render right into your layer. So let's go ahead and undo that. And let's go ahead and make a new layer down here, and we can call this Tree. What you name your layer really doesn't matter. And then let's go to render tree. So the advantage here is we're putting it on its own layer so we can resize it to smaller, bigger, what have you, without affecting your background. Now, first, let's quickly go through what our settings. So here you can uh, default. This is the default. This is probably what you see if you've never opened the tree filter. If you've done a preset before, you can go back down to custom and that'll show you the last settings that you made. Um, you also have the open the option, sorry, to load a preset or save a preset. So if you do a bunch of work to get a tree looking exactly how you want it, you can go ahead and save that as a preset and then later you can load that preset. So here, let's go to default. Um, this is probably what you'll see. So the first thing here is your base tree type. And here you can see you have a bunch of different types of trees. And when you select one of those, you can see that that's the type of tree. Uh, let's, you can see here. Now there's a few of these, uh, like shrub, for example. Um, actually, the one, oh, palm tree, this is one. Now you'll notice here, I don't have any option for leaf size, branch height, or branch thickness. So there's a few of these that don't have all the options, but the majority of these do have all options available to them. Let's go back to oak tree. So first thing is the light direction. So you'll notice that this side of the tree is a little bit brighter than this side of the tree here. And as I turn this, you can see that where the light is, is changing more and more toward the right here. So at 180, you can imagine your light source is over here. At zero, your light source is over here on the left. Um, for this, let's put it kind of around the 38 mark. Next is your leaves amount. Um, 70 is the default. If you put that to zero, you'll have a bare tree. And if you put it to 100, you'll have a very full tree and you can kind of move those around and change how many leaves are on your tree. Let's put this back to 70. All right, next is the leaf size. So if I move this down, you'll notice that my tree, um, my leaf size at being at zero, you can't see them at all. As I start to move this up, you'll see that those leaves are getting bigger and bigger. So this is kind of a way to control the scale of your tree. If you want this to be a baby tree, uh, meaning a very young tree, you would make your leaf size bigger. If you want it to be a very old tree, you may want to make that leaf size smaller. I'm going to go ahead and reset this and let's go back to default here. So your leaf size at 100 is the default. All right, next we have the branch height, and this determines how much of a, um, a base you have. So the higher this is, the more of a trunk you have. If I put this kind of toward the bottom there, you can see we have uh, very low branches. So that's what the branch height does. Uh, next you have branch thickness. So this is how thick the branches are. I'm going to go ahead and take the leaf size down to zero here. 
And here, uh, this is more relevant. As I turn up the branch thickness, you can see that those are getting much thicker. If I take it down, you get this very thin uh, branch thickness. So those are all your settings. Those are all the variables that each tree has. Again, I'm going to take this back to our default. All right, and then the other thing here is you have default leaves. Now the default leaves means whatever tree you've selected, the type of leaf for that tree is the type of leaf that will render, right? So depending on which type of leaf uh, tree it is, that's the kind of leaf it has. Now you can turn this off and you have these options for leaves here. So if you want a specific branch or tree configuration, but you want to have different leaves to it, you can change that here. And then here you have randomized shapes. And if you do that, you can see that there is more randomness to the shapes of the leaves. And if I turn that off, you can see your arrangements here. This is basically like a random seed, meaning each time I do this, I get a different tree. That's important if you're adding a bunch of trees to your scene and you don't want them to look like they're clones of each other. What you can do is just change the arrangement to a slightly different tree. So those are all your basic settings. Next, let's I'm going to default this again. Let's go into advanced. So advanced, you have this camera tilt. This basically rotates the tree. So if you do this slowly, you can kind of see it a little bit better. But this is rotating the uh, camera around the tree. So that's what the camera tilt does. Next, you have custom colors. So let's say I wanted to make this uh, a fall tree. Well, I could change this to kind of a red color. And when I close this, you can see now that I have a fall tree. You can also change the color of the branches. So if I wanted to make this, you know, maybe a slightly darker tree, I could do that. And that'll change the color of the branches. Next, you have flat shading. If I turn that on, there will be no shading in the leaves. So you can see if you might, you know, if you're doing an anime or some kind of cartoon, you might want this. You can also enhance the contrast that'll bring in more darks and lights inside of your tree. And then you can also flat shade the branches. You can see when I turn that on, uh, all the shading on the branches disappears. And then you also have this leaves rotation lock. With that, all of the leaf shapes shape uh, face you in the same way. I'm going to turn that off as well. So I'm going to turn all these off, um, go back to basic. And for this uh, composite, what I want to do is add some spruce trees. So I'm going to go here to spruce tree. And I like the look of this. I'm just going to hit OK. All right, so now we have our tree and let's zoom in here and let's look at the limitations of this tool. So if I zoom in, you can see it does not look very photographic. I basically have these flat, um, flat leaves that are just a very basic shape and they do have variation in color, but not much. And then also if we look down here at our trunk, you can see it does have some color variation and some body to it, but compared to a photograph, as you can see here, it's not very realistic. So there's a few things we can do to kind of limit this. One is um, we can kind of get rid of or minimize the amount of trunk we're showing. I think that helps. So I'm just going to my erase tool here. Make sure you have a soft round erase and then just erase kind of the bottom of it like this so that you're not seeing all that. So that's one thing. The other thing you can do is obviously adjust the color, but you can also add a bit of grunge on top of it. So here, if I go to my nuclear grunges, just grab one of these, pull it in and 
make it the size of my tree. Because my tree has transparency, I can lock this, uh, clip it to here, and then put this on overlay. And now, if I zoom in here, you can see this has more variation. Um, also, it has a little more variation in color. So this might help. Uh, maybe I don't want it quite so strong, so I can maybe put this on 50%. And then I'll just melt this in with Command E. That'll merge both layers together. I don't need it on a separate layer. I also want to move this a little bit more toward the green color that I have here, which is a little more yellow. So I can do that with Command U on my keyboard or going to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and then just pushing this a little bit toward the left so we get a little bit more of a yellow color. I think maybe about minus 20 is good here. All right, so those are kind of the tricks that you can do uh, with the tree tool in or the tree filter in Photoshop. What I want to do next is just use this tool to add a few trees to my composite. And for this composite, I want kind of a winding road going into a foggy forest with a big... Uh, deer standing here and then a hiker standing here. So first, let me just make a selection of this. I kind of want this existing area here, but I don't want that tree or shrub because I'm going to replace it with my own trees. So maybe I'll do this. Whoops. There you go. That's the area that I want to replace. I'm going to use generative fill for this and just type in winding path. Now you're not going to get exactly the same result as mine, but uh, play around with your variations and try to get something relatively close if you want to follow along. But now that I've shown you how to use the tree command, uh, what the rest is really up to you here. And I kind of like this. I kind of like that there is an area here where I can put my deer. So this is good for me. Next, uh, I'm going to add my trees here. So I'm going to turn on my tree layer and just move it into place, maybe make it a bit smaller. This will be my first tree right here. I'm going to make another layer. We'll call this uh, tree two. Oops. Tree two. And now if I go to filter tree, now the problem with this is it's going to give me the exact same tree. And you can kind of tell just by the top here that uh, this is a clone and I don't want that. So I'm going to command Z, go back to here. Now, if I hold down option and click on this, it'll bring, whoops, hold down option. It should bring up my settings, but it's going to be, um, with all the settings I already did. And that works for any filter. So now here I can change my arrangements. Now, another thing I could do is click on randomize shapes and then hit okay. All right, so that looks good. Now I need to also apply the same color to it, the color adjustment that I did. Again, if I hold down command U, that'll bring up my hue saturation. But if I add option to the mix or alt on a PC and do that, it'll also apply my last settings to it. So then I can just hit OK. All right, then I also want to add a little bit of texture. I don't want to bring in a texture each time. I actually have a pattern. Um, so I can just go to Pattern Overlay here. And uh, one of my Nucle compositing patterns is a grunge layer. So I'm selecting that, putting it on Overlay, and then I can just adjust the scale to where I like it. Maybe maybe I'll try one of these other ones. This one I think is a little better for this. And we'll put this at around 60. Okay, then I'm gonna make this smaller. And I'm also just gonna erase part of this bottom down there. So something like that. All right, then we'll do one more tree. Let's go to tree here. And 
Okay, so it looks like because we turned on the randomized shapes, even though it used the same settings, it actually gave me a random shape here. So that's a nice advantage there. Um, and that's also why when you have the randomized shapes turned on, you don't have this random seed that it calls arrangement for some reason. So. All right, then we'll apply our same uh, hue saturation with command option U. And then I can also just drag this pattern light, pattern overlay on top. We'll do that. And this one I want to put about here, put it behind this. And because this is starting to get farther in my scene, I needed to have a little bit of fog on top of it. I'm going to do that with a command U and just bring up the bottom of this. That'll just make my blacks uh, lighter. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more over here again. I don't want to have it be the same, so we'll add another layer here and just do another tree. We'll do the hue saturation, make it smaller. And this one also needs more white on top of it. So Command M to bring up my curve and just bring up the bottom of that. And I think that looks good. All right, next, let's bring in the deer. I'm going to go to File Open. Got this deer file here. I'm just going to grab my Object Selection tool, select around the deer. That looks good. Command C. We can close that and then do Command V. I want this to be kind of larger than life, so something like this. And the nice thing about these trees is we don't have to cut out trees because they have transparency built in. So that's a real nice feature there. All right, and then this uh, deer definitely needs to have some atmosphere on top of it. Um, I'll do that with a curve. Before I add the curve, I'm gonna turn this into a smart object just so that I can adjust my curve later. And then I'm just going to bring up the bottom of this until it looks like it has about the right amount of fog on top of it. Good. All right, and then we'll go File Open. Let's bring in our hiker. We'll grab our Object Selection tool, select him. And I want to grab a bit of the ground that he's standing on too, just so that... Uh, We don't have to rebuild any of these shadows. And I'll do Command C, we can close that, and then do Command V. And we'll make him standing about there. Now, anytime we can avoid showing the feet, um, I think that's going to help us. So maybe I'll put him here. I'm going to cheat a little bit and just kind of hide his feet. So I'm going to put him here, turn him off for a second. Oops. And kind of hide him behind some of this brush. So I'm going to go to my quick selection tool, make it a bit smaller, and go on to my background layer. Select this rock and maybe some of these plants here. And then with him selected, I'll just add a mask there. So he's kind of standing behind there. We don't have to worry about doing a really realistic shadow. I think that works pretty well. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I may just paint a little bit more atmosphere on top here. So let's make a layer called atmosphere. I'm gonna go to my brushes. And in my favorite brushes here, I'm going to go to Atmosphere Brushes and just select this Advanced Smoke. And I'm going to make this, kind of select this fog color here. 
and I'm just painting some fog right there. Take that down a little bit. And I'm really happy with that. Uh, one other trick we can do here is if I wanted to post this, let's say, uh, make this my YouTube thumbnail and I needed to, needed it to be 16 by 9, I can go to the crop tool, uh, select 16 by 9 under my ratio, make it the existing height of my documents. And here under the fill, make sure it's on generative expand. Then Photoshop will just figure out what to put on the left and the right. Now this doesn't work well for all images, but I've found that when you have kind of a nature background, it usually works much better than uh, architectural or studio or any other kind of background. Uh, just because natural things are easier for AI to recreate. So something like this looks, you know, really good. Maybe something like this looks even better. And there you go. That's a quick composite there where we've used our tree filter to uh, add some trees in Photoshop. So there you have it. That's how you use the tree filter in Photoshop and also how you can use it to create your own composites. Now I did use a uh, pattern from my Nucle pattern set as well as a grunge texture from my Nucle grunge textures and a brush from my uh, favorite brush set. I will include links to where you can purchase those in the description if you're interested. Otherwise, obviously, you can use your own brushes and your own grunge layers in the same way. Now, hopefully through this video, you learned some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own compositing projects. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, leave a comment, leave a like. And also, if you're interested in learning Photoshop, check out Nucle.com. I sell professional training as well as tools and assets for Photoshop and specifically photorealistic compositing. Check that out. Here's some other tutorials that you can also check out. And I will see you next time.